What's up guys? So AMD released 21.9.1 today. They've officially announced uh, certain features that now have support such as smart access memory for Radeon RX 5000 within the drivers. Um, I can't recall exactly if they had the smart access memory switch with my RX 5700. Uh, I do remember it being implemented a few driver versions back, but I could have already been on the 6700 XT at that point. Um, I'd have to like go back and look at my old videos. But anyway, um, improved Vulkan API support. One of them is security related. I'm not sure if all of them are security related, but the top one is. And yeah, that's something to be aware of if you work with Vulkan or if you use Vulkan and fixed issues, known issues, still some of the same known issues that still haven't been fixed, even though they're adding new features. This annoys me. I know there's probably certain parts, certain people on their driver teams that work on specific things, so it's not like you can expect one part of the team to work on something else um, or to come help with something else. But I really wish they would just iron out all these known issues that have been recurring over multiple driver updates, particularly the bottom one. If they can't fix this for the majority of users, they should state what series of GPUs it's affecting and just make that a statement that this cannot be fixed. You know, like be honest with with the consumers so we know which GPUs have a problem with metrics logging. And if it's to do with metrics logging itself, they should scrap it. They should scrap this stupid feature that they can't fix because this has persisted over 10 driver updates. It, it really annoyed me, probably more than 10. Since they implemented performance metrics and logging, I've seen this constantly popping up and they cannot fix it or they don't care to fix it. Um, and it, from a consumer standpoint, it's like your thing's broken. Either you fix it or you recall it, you know, like recall the feature. Uh, take it away or make a hard statement, you know, so we know exactly what's going wrong. Um, but anyway, I guess they don't care ab about informing users properly. They they probably think most people just skim over it and think oh, it's no big deal. But yeah, it's annoying me because I keep seeing it. Um, and then you can see known issues with HVAC on AMD link. And that's about it. But the main purpose of my videos, if you've been following them at all, is to just test the drivers and make sure they're working in relation to the previous drivers. And I have upgraded to Windows 11, and I'll just show you here. Uh, I'm on the latest chipset driver for my CPU, which I've upgraded to a 5600X, and the latest GPU driver, obviously. And this is the build of Windows 11 I'm on. And the reason I have to state this, I have to actually put the number in, is because I know that with 21H2, depending on how their updates are pushing through, you can be on a higher build, even though you're up to date. So this is as high as they push through to me, and I can't force it uh, without fully reinstalling um, a later build, like manually. I can't force it through Windows updates to give me a newer build. So just to be aware, there are some bugs still in Windows 11, but in relation to gaming performance, it's only gone up, not down. So if I go back to 21H2 on my 3600, these are the numbers we should see these same numbers or higher if the drivers are working as expected. And this was already on Windows 11. And then we go back to Windows 10, uh, 21H1, and you can see here 156 on Heaven 1080p and 67 on Superposition. So you can actually see here 21.7.2 on Windows 10 is performing within, within like, ballpark performance basically so 67 67 superposition was more reliable i think uh heaven is a little bit more biased towards cpu and memory like basically to do with the os so there might have been a small degradation here but then when i went to 21.8.2 which is just before uh, the one we're on now we actually saw a massive improvement to 169 and so this can also be to do with the driver profiles uh, under the gaming tab there was a bug where global graphics was still affecting Heaven, even though Heaven had its own setting. So I actually went through and forced times for tessellation because it seems like the tessellation in Heaven is exaggerated to a point where you're not getting visual quality improvements, but it hurts AMD GPUs unnecessarily. So if you lock it to times four, you'll get much better Heaven scores. And I think I was playing around with that after realizing that the global setting was affecting i went over this but the global setting was basically affecting heaven even though it shouldn't have been so something to do with tessellation level i'm pretty sure that's why we saw a bigger performance boost but if there was a driver issue preventing performance we would have seen all the other numbers fluctuating around and it looks like our minimums were basically the same across multiple driver updates windows 10 had two fps higher on minimums 
But again, it's just like within margin of error. Like I don't do multiple runs. I just do one run. And if there was a significant issue, we would hopefully catch that on that one run. Um, and then, yeah, superposition has been super consistent uh, with 67.63 within one FPS on all parameters. So from Windows 10 to 1 H1, we saw 67, 56, 81, 67, 56, 81 on 2, 1, 7 2, And this was uh, the Windows transition to Windows 11. And then, as you can see here, 67... Uh, went up slightly on 21.8.2, and then same on the maximum, but very consistent scores. Even the score was 9048, 9048 uh, between driver updates. And so now we're going to see what happens if the 5600X somehow helps with that performance. But the main thing we're looking for is that the benchmarks run through. They don't crash. Um, you know, stability, that's what people are looking for. Are these safe to upgrade to? And if performance is going down or up. And I've also decided to add Shadow of the Tomb Raider into my benchmark um, suite because it is very, very consistent on the 95% and average. I actually ran a bunch of benchmarks uh, at 1080p and 1440p. They were both GPU bound with my 6700 XT using hardware on box optimized settings. And even when I played with my GPU overclock and PBO, these metrics remain solid like the G the cpu was barely affecting the gpu result uh the cpu result was changing so there's a cpu section of this benchmark that was going up and down but the gpu performance was very 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 consistent so that's where i decided to add it in because it shouldn't be affected by anything else on the system um apart from the drivers so we should see if there's any after 21.9 we should start seeing differences if there is if there is any between driver updates so anyway, I'll get into the testing now. Um, all I, the only other thing I got to go through is if you're going to upgrade to these drivers, be aware that when they make massive changes to how the driver works, um, when they add new features into the tuning section, for example, this is new. Um, they've added these buttons into here. They weren't there before to do with automatic tuning. I think this was on a separate section before. You actually had to go to it, but now it's just up at the top, so you can do automatic. Uh, I haven't tried it at all. But automatic, you know, undervolt, overclock, RAM, and as well as the fan profiles. But if you already have tuned profiles where you're comfortable with what you've set, when they do these big driver updates, it actually breaks your old tuning profile. So you won't be able to just reload your fan profile anymore. So I recommend going in here, taking a screenshot of exactly what you've set if you haven't memorized it, so that when you update, you can just copy and paste the settings over manually because I had to manually try to remember, and I ended up tuning a new fan profile because I was like annoyed. I couldn't remember exactly what I had set, but it was kind of frustrating because this has happened uh, with one of the previous driver updates where they added smart access memory. It broke the tuning profiles again. And so I've had to do that twice now in the span of, I think, five driver updates. So just something to be aware of. I'm going to make it a common practice now. Whenever I get a driver update, I'm going to screenshot this to make sure I don't... Um, so to keep my settings consistent as well, because I don't want my fan profile moving around too much because that could affect the benchmark results. So anyway, this is what I'm running and nothing else has really changed. Um, everything else carried over. Like I did do an in-place install over the top, but I had to just reload my tuning settings. Everything else was the same. Like all the um, fancy features, I keep these disabled. This kept, this um, carried over between 21.8.1. Between but if you are coming from a, mu a much older driver, there is a chance that everything will get reset. So just be aware of that. If you've set any um, particular features to, to disabled, uh, you might have to do that again. Just go do a quick, you know, check over all your driver settings to make sure nothing has re-enabled itself. Because certain settings will conflict with certain OSDs, um, particularly in-game overlay can cause issues when you're running MSI Afterburner overlay. And yeah, um, but everything else was fine. And I'll get into the benchmarks now. So yeah, I'll turn off my mic and thanks for watching, guys. I'll I'm not sure if I'll do an outro for this. It's just really to give you the performance figures. And here you can witness a Windows 10 bug.
Uh, this is to do with when you have some kind of 3D load over File Explorer. If you try to drag Windows, the mouse uh, DPI or polling rate, if it's set above 125 hertz, will cause the mouse to lag and move in slow motion. So when you saw my mouse moving really slow, that was me trying to drag the window and the bug. Uh, they still haven't fixed it with my build, but something to be aware of, I would actually stay on Windows 10 just to avoid this bug, but it's not serious enough that I would actually roll back because that's also a big job. Um, but you can see here, if I try to move this window, the mouse just, like I already finished, I already let go of the button and it's still moving, uh, the window's lagging. So to fix that, there's actually a tool, at least with my Logitech mouse, um, if I go to onboard memory manager for my mouse, it's a little app that Logitech have. I can set the report rate down to 125, but this also affects mouse accuracy for gaming. But that's the fix to kind of get the dragging bug to minimize a bit. It doesn't completely fix it, but it makes it much better. So if I set my report rate on the hardware uh, onboard memory of the mouse to 125, now when I drag the window, it's not as bad. You can still see there's still a little bit of stutter if I do it too much. But if I minimize these uh, other background processes, wait, I'll just minimize heaven. Uh, you can see it's not as bad. I can actually move the window with a little bit more consistency. But yeah, just something to be aware of. Um, I just wanted to run a music clip because the heaven, the heaven music has copyright issues now for some reason. It's really weird. I've just got the same clip that I play over and over again. That's fine. I like it.
Okay, so that's it. Let's see how that compares. So 172.9. I was playing with, um, because I, I remember I sw switched these around, and it actually makes more sense to have the actual FPS right above the frame latency because they're both in real time, and the average is the average, so it makes more sense that way. Um, but it didn't look like it hurt the scores. The minimum is kind of a touchy area with Heaven because you can just rerun the benchmark um, and start it really quickly uh, after, like, you can stop and start it at the beginning of the benchmark, and you can boost your minimums just by doing that, and I didn't do it this time. So, you know, within margin of error, I'd say, and the max was 354. That is noticeably higher. But it looks like my fan profiles aren't working properly, because we've got 65C on the hotspot, which is what the fan profile runs off, and I'm pretty sure I set... 65C to, let me see here, performance, where am I, what, why is it, okay, it's up here, performance tuning, I'm pretty sure I set 70C for 100, and it's hitting 100% at 64C, uh, which doesn't make sense, unless it's, unless the um, polling rate of Afterburner is not catching spikes to 70, and it's kind of like spiking to 70 so quick that you can't see it, and then it goes to 100, and quickly that brings it back down. Um, oh, but win these two, sorry. But even the fan profile is showing 101%. That doesn't even make sense. It can't go over 100%. So some inaccurate fan reporting. I don't know if that's Afterburner or the Radeon software default, but you can see in the Radeon software it is running at 100% for 64C, even though 70C should be 100%. So it's like I have to kind of adjust this curve. It's a bit finicky like that. Um, sometimes you'll have like a lower number at 70, and it will favor moving up to the higher number as soon as it breaches that lower number. So now that it's above 60, it's like it's heading towards that's the 70 area. It's like it's in a stepping instead of a curve. Uh, so if it's stepping, that makes more sense. Over 60 goes to the next stepping. So that's a possibility there. And if I wanted to lower that um, because of that weird behavior, I would have to maybe set it to. I would have to adjust this entire curve to try to get that crazy high fan speed down. So I might want to do um, 75, and then this would be 65. Basically, just adjust the curve to be less aggressive um, so that around 65 it, it maintains 70 instead. And then if I hit apply, you'll see here that this fan RPM, it takes a moment, should drop down a little bit. So now it's at 86, still pretty high. 86% um, should be somewhere in between 65 and 75. And it's running at 64, which it should be under 70% for 60, under 65. It should be like somewhere between 60 and 70%. So this, this fan um, RPM behavior is abnormal. And I'm on a gigabyte 6700 XT. There's nothing special here. Um, it is a little bit strange. But I am holding 65, though, so it could be wanting to push up to 100 stepping. So anyway, that's just some weird fan behavior and how you can adjust it. Um, I could even make that more relaxed, um, 65, and then put that to, like, 65 as well to try to get that fan speed down. But at the same time, I do want to keep the temps... Um, controlled in this because I am in a tropical country. So for people running 10C cooler ambience, I'm in 32C at the moment in my room. Um, for people running in like a more normal temperature, like around 25C ambient or less, technically I would be, if, if I was running these fan speeds in, in 25C ambient, I would be like under 60 degrees on hotspot. So this is just more to keep it controlled so that it's not affecting the scores and throttling the GPU too much. Um, I also remember I had my minimums here for gaming. This doesn't affect idle, but the minimum frequency up at like 2000 plus uh, does help maintain more stable. It prevents dips and stutters in certain games. So I'll just resave that profile. It's still not that great. It's still, it wants to go fast because yeah, 65C. But anyway, now I'm dawdling too much. 35 and the score was 4356. So it's gone up. That could be because I played with the fan curve, and that's what I mentioned is that you have to like take screenshots now because I I want to keep consistency with the fan curves but when driver updates. Um 
But yeah, within margins of error, I think maybe just the fan curves might have boosted it a tiny bit. That could be a driver or a CPU improvement too, though, because I was running the 3600 in these previous tests. So anyway, as long as the scores go up and not down and it's not crashing, that's what we care about. We want stability and the same or better performance. That's all we're looking for. It's not it's nothing to do with who's got the best scores type of thing. So anyway, that looks good. And then we'll move on to Shadow of the Tomb Raider. So basically, you can see here I've got the... Um, the more old school benchmark. This is for older games. This gives us a relative gauge on on st performance stability. And then we go into Shadow of the Tomb Raider, which is a more modern title at 1440p before Superposition 4K optimized, which is a very GPU heavy benchmark. Um, although Shadow of the Tomb Raider is very <laughs> intensive as well. Okay. To show you my settings here real quick this is based on the hardware unboxed optimization guide so they basically recommend uh, what's worth it and what's not and depth of field mainly affects cinematics so it's not like a in-game thing i know some people don't like depth of field but it shouldn't matter for the benchmark anyway uh, volumetric lighting does affect the visuals quite considerably you can see how plain that looks adds a nice lighting effect and seems to work properly and yeah, these are just the settings I'm running if you wanted to try to replicate this with a similar GPU just for an apples to apples type of comparison. 2440, uh, 100 hertz, uh, that doesn't matter. But just so you can see, uh, SMAA T2X. But this benchmark is really, really, really good for GPU uh, performance stability. Like you could run this benchmark 10 times and you'll get the same GPU results if you don't change anything else on the system. Uh, it won't even, background stuff doesn't even seem to bother it that much, as long as there's nothing too intensive. Um, but I was like playing with my CPU overclock and able to get the same performance every time. So yeah. Estaré aquí toda la noche. ¡Hey! ¡Cuidado, niños!
So there we go, and this is the metric we're looking at here under the GPU column. 110, one, uh, 110 on minimum, 136 average, and 95% 117. So the minimum, like the, the bare minimum, and then yeah, 95% of 117. And that's what we're going to be logging for future uh, driver updates. And I'm going to be using this benchmark because of its consistency. And I'll, and I'll, I've got another video coming with the 5600X where I do a lot of CPU overclocking and I use this benchmark and you can see the GPU consistency between like 10 plus runs of, of this under different CPU overclocks and the GPU just doesn't get affected very easily. Okay, we'll log that now. I'm going to try to memorize that. So 110, 136, 117. Should have took just a screenshot with an easy ray. Yeah, I think that was it. See if I can get back to a normal desktop now. Because I am recording on 3440 ultra wide, but I do the benchmark on 1440p. So I just want to make sure, I'm not going to save this because I've got the video itself as a reference uh, and I don't want to have like a million screenshots on my system, but just to make sure that I haven't uh, copied everything, anything the wrong way. Yeah, you can see the minimum. The minimum doesn't really matter, to be honest. It's more the 95 percentile, uh, 117, but just in case there's like a massive dip on minimums for whatever reason in a future driver update, I'll record it anyway. And obviously the max is irrelevant. Uh, and you can also see the 5600X performance on the CPU side of things. If you do, if you run this benchmark and you've got a different model CPU, uh, this is the 5600X at 4.5 gigahertz. Okay, and lastly, superposition, which should be very, very close. Like based on months of previous driver testing um, with the 6700XT, the superposition result is just always so accurate as well. It's it's another very accurate benchmark, and that's why I like it, a very consistent benchmark. Um, that's why I like Tomb Raider as well, because it's consistent in a way that's very similar to superposition and consistency. But I'll leave that open. It doesn't matter. What is going on there? I haven't actually tried running this since updating. I ran it on my previous 11, but I haven't tried running this with the um, 5600X at all. I wonder if there's a problem. I mean, I know the GPU is stable, and I bet I've stability tested this CPU fairly well. Try one more time. See what happens. It's almost like it was having trouble 
Um, okay, it ran that time. I think it was having trouble going from idle to load because I noticed that the load, uh, the idle clocks were very low, and then there was a huge stutter at the start. But now that it's running, it seems fine. Okay, we'll just see if it does that behavior again. I kind of want to see if I can replicate that real quick. Uh, I also want to turn the music back on because I had turned it off for some reason. Let's just give that another go and I'll turn the mic off this time. Okay, I think it was a bug with the 5600X and first running the benchmark because it probably had the 3600, I don't know, it had like some data from the 3600 um, in its log and maybe that's just automatically been cleared because it's running fine now. A bit weird, oh well. Alrighty, so those numbers actually do look pretty good. Uh, it seems like we've gone up, so maybe they didn't, like maybe um, they've optimized the SAM mode further. Uh, it's a very strong possibility because they didn't really announce it as a big feature update with the previous uh, beta drivers. So it's possible they've optimized that because we did see a slight performance improvement, but it could also be that the CPU's latencies are somehow helping in some way because I was on the 3600. So just got to take those things into account but for the most part, at least it's running properly, you know, like it's not gone down, um, no massive dips. We're not seeing a big drop on minimums or anything like that. So I'd say these drivers are performing as expected and they do seem stable apart from that little hitch at the beginning. I think that was just superposition detecting I've changed my CPU because I honestly had not run it um, in previous. And it still, it detects Windows 11, uh, my build uh, 22,000 as Windows 10. That's interesting. 
Uh, anyway, I guess because maybe they haven't updated superposition for Windows 11 at all, so it just detects a build. So, eight point, wait, I've already put that in. Uh, 9298. Uh, anyway, um, I hope that helps, guys. Like, the, all this information, like, the people that do watch my driver updates know that I put it all in the description anyway. So, if you don't want to listen to my tedious rambling, it is very easy to just go straight to the comments. And they would have already found it if they got impatient, I hope. So please don't try to judge me too harshly for talking too much. Um, in the next driver update, it should be a lot more, it should be a lot easier because I don't have to explain all this Windows stuff. I've already explained it, and you'll at least be able to see if anything's changed with the Windows build um, between this one and the next. So thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next one. Bye.